So it's that time of year again. Uh, session is about to start. Bills have been filed, and I wanted to uh, to take a little bit of time to give everybody back in Senate District 13 an update of what's going on at the Capitol, uh, what it is that I'm working on for this session. And so hopefully this will be the first in a, a line of, of videos. Uh, we're really going to try to to step up our game on uh, putting out videos that you guys can watch, that you guys can share. Uh, just really hope to give better content, uh, give better information uh, to everybody who doesn't live and breathe what's going on at the state capitol all the time. So we're two weeks away from session starting, and today I just wanted to go over two of the the bills that I've filed this year that I'm already getting quite a few questions about. Uh, the first one is uh, a Tobacco 21 bill, uh, commonly referred to at this point as T21. Uh, what that bill does is uh, the, the Trump administration, the federal government, uh, recently changed the law on tobacco, and, and really it's on nicotine products is the best way to understand it. Uh, those have gone from you have to be 18 years old to, to buy those products to now it's you have to be 21 years old. So this is not just cigarettes, but it's any type of tobacco product and it's, it's any type of vaping product. And to me, the vaping side of that's actually more important than the, the tobacco side because uh, vaping's become a real epidemic in our schools. And we've had up to, I mean, reports of around 70, 75% of high school students in our area who are uh, using those vape products. And basically that means 75% of our kids in our area uh, are currently addicted to nicotine. And so the federal government made a bold step. Uh, the problem with that is that the federal law and the state law no longer uh, were, were jiving. Uh, so we had federal law that said 21, we have state law that says 18. So I've gone in and created a bill. Uh, <clears throat> it's uh, Senate Bill 1423. Uh, for anybody who wants to look at it, if you go to the comments, we'll, uh, we'll put a link to that bill. So if you wanted to read it, uh, that link will be down in the comments here. Um, but the, uh, that Senate Bill 1423 uh, will change where state law and federal law match on that Tobacco 21. And so it, it really ends up being a pretty simple bill uh, instead of it being, you know, Oklahoma going out on a limb. Uh, it really is just a bill that's going to uh, align us with what the Trump administration has already done. So second bill I want to talk about is Senate Bill 1530. Uh, and it deals with uh, T-Set, which is the Tobacco uh, settlement Endowment Trust. And so this deals with uh, the tobacco money, that, the, the cigarette lawsuit. Most states, uh, when they got that money, they just kind of wasted it away in, in many ways. And, and Oklahoma did something incredibly intelligent uh, when the first big tobacco lawsuit was settled. Uh, we took that money and we put it in an endowment fund. Uh, and it's T-set uh, is what we call it. And we've been gathering that money and, and we've been very, very conservative with what, with what we spend there. And we only spend uh, money that we've made off of the investments in that fund. And so right now that fund is uh, somewhere above $1.1 billion. Now that's billion with a B that we have in that fund, and it funds a lot of different things that we do on healthcare. Uh, but the one thing that a lot of people don't know about TSET is that every year we get more money from the tobacco companies. Uh, to make it really simple, because the math is, is pretty complex, um, when it's all said and done, we get about $50 million a year new tobacco money uh, that is going into that fund that already has $1.1 billion into it. Uh, and that's how we've been able to grow that fund to $1.1 billion, is that we've been putting that money in every year. Uh, what I'm proposing is this year we put back on the ballot a question on whether or not we want to continue 
to put that $50 million into that savings fund, or do we want to start using that 50 million plus the interest from the 1.1 billion to help healthcare in Oklahoma? Uh, and there are a lot of ideas on what you could do with that $50 million. A lot of people want to use it for Medicaid expansion. Uh, one of my biggest things uh, when I talk to hospitals in our area is they have trouble buying the newest equipment. They have trouble keeping the hospital updated to all the new regulations. And so I'd love to see, see some of that money uh, moved into a low interest or a no interest loan program where hospitals, especially hospitals in rural Oklahoma, would have a chance to, to get a, a cheaper loan to buy that new machine they need uh, or to, to go in and upgrade the operating room so that, so that your operating rooms are, are meeting code. Because I know a lot of hospitals in rural Oklahoma don't really even meet code nowadays. Uh, so, so that's one of the things I would love to see. There are a lot of ideas and we'll debate those ideas, but, but really the crux of that bill is the question, and this isn't something the legislature can do. This is something that the, the people of Oklahoma will put it on a ballot and let the people make that decision. But are, are we ready to say 1.1 billion is enough inside that TSEP fund? And now start to, to take that extra 50 million and instead of putting it into the savings account, we start using that extra 50 million uh, that year to, to help our hospitals to, to possibly you know pay for a Medicaid expansion, whatever that may be. We're gonna debate that through the session on what those uses would be. Uh, but the underlying question that, that's, that I hope goes to the ballot and the people get to decide is, uh, is 1.1 billion enough? And we want to, to really start to make a dent in healthcare by taking that other money. So those are the two bills uh, that I wanted to discuss today. I think that they're both kind of interrelated and in that they're, they're both tobacco uh, related bills. And so I have a, a lot more bills that we'll talk about. Um, I really am passionate about some things that we're doing uh, to try to lower the cost of healthcare. And so we'll talk about that, that probably in the next video that we put out. Uh, but wanted to get get that out to you and, and start really preparing for session. Uh, so please uh, like, please comment, and more than anything, please share. Uh, I, I want the people of District 13 to know what it is that I'm doing, and I want those comments. I want to know what you think. I want to know what your opinion is. Uh, I'm here to do the job that you want me to do. Uh, and so that communication, whether it's through email, whether it's through calling my office, or whether it's just uh, through putting things in the comment on this page, uh, that helps me be the best senator that I can be. So as always, it's an absolute honor to represent you. Uh, and I appreciate you trusting me to do it. And I hope that you'll uh, let me know what you think and, and let me uh, really have, have that input from you so that I can do this job well. Uh, thanks and God bless and, and we'll be talking again soon.